The Assassination of Murtala Muhammad Murtala Muhammad was a charismatic Nigerian military leader who became the country's fourth head of state in 1975 after leading a successful coup that overthrew the government of General Yakubu Gowan. However, his time in power was tragically cut short on the morning of February 13, 1976. On that fateful day, Murtala Muhammad was on his way to work in his Mercedes Benz car, accompanied by his aide de camp and driver. As they drove through the busy streets of Lagos, they were suddenly ambushed by a group of armed men who opened fire on the car. The attack was swift and deadly. Murtala Muhammad was hit by several bullets and slumped over in his seat, while his aide de camp and driver were also killed in the hail of gunfire. The attackers then fled the scene, leaving chaos and confusion in their wake. News of the attack quickly spread throughout Nigeria and the world. People were shocked and saddened by the sudden and violent death of a leader who had only been in power for a little over six months. The country was plunged into mourning as citizens tried to come to terms with the loss of a man who had promised to bring about much-needed change and reform. In the aftermath of the attack, investigations were launched to try and identify the perpetrators and bring them to justice. The investigation led to the arrest and trial of several suspects, including Dimka, a lieutenant colonel in the Nigerian army, who was found guilty of masterminding the assassination. Though Murtala's murderers were captured and were publicly executed, there are conspiracy theories about the cause of his death. One of such stories linked the West to the killing. Many believe that his Africa has come of age speech which he delivered 32 days before his assassination at an extraordinary meeting of the OAU held in Addis Ababa might have incensed the Western power that eventually planned his assassination. But some of his colleagues think the general was partly responsible for his tragic end. They believe he made a fatal mistake by refusing to take his personal security more seriously. One, he did not relocate to Doden Barracks where he could be safer. Rather, he continued staying in the house he occupied before he became the head of state. Two, he often rode without convoy of security personnel. A few days after his assumption of office as head of state, he reportedly drove alone in his personal car with his driver, from Lagos to Kano, a journey lasting more than 13 hours. Media reports claimed his deputy, Olushegun Obasanjor, urged him a number of times to be more security conscious, but he dismissed the warning, saying, If the coup plotters succeeded in killing all of us, good luck to them. Murtala Mohammed's death was a great loss to Nigeria and the world. His legacy, however, lives on, as he is remembered as a courageous leader who fought for justice and equality for all. His life and tragic death serve as a reminder of the sacrifices made by those who seek to bring about change and make the world a better place.